Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with Joe Tedisco in this segment, CEO of CoreMedics. CoreMedics is a biopharmaceutical company focused on developing and commercializing therapeutic products that prevent infection and other life-threatening conditions. He's going to talk about the dangers of hospital and other related infections, as well as the urgency behind the global expansion of antimicrobial resistance, which is um, on the rise. He's also going to talk a little bit about the company's investigational catheter lock solution, DefendCath, to reduce the risk of catheter-related bloodstream infections from central venous catheters, which can dramatically increase hospital costs and the length of stay as well. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Joe Tedisco. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Neil. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. Well, tell us a bit about uh, CoreMedics and what you're focused on in this uh, this year and the, I guess the coming year. Sure. So CoreMedics is a pre-commercial stage biotechnology company. Uh, We are focused on developing therapeutic products that uh, prevent and treat life-threatening conditions. Uh, Our lead product and investigational drug, DefendCath, the NDA was just uh, resubmitted to FDA, and yesterday it was happy to announce uh, accepted by FDA for filing and review with a target action date middle of November. Congratulations. (laughs) Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but at our core, what, you know, what we're looking to do with, with the commercialization of DefendCath is hopefully, you know, change the safety profile associated with receiving hemodialysis through a central venous catheter. Mm-hmm. Um, and by that, I mean, one of the most severe complications of, of receiving hemodialysis through a central venous catheter are catheter-related bloodstream infections. They have an incredibly high incidence rate. They can happen in the um, outpatient setting as high as a third of the time. Um, and even in the inpatient setting, uh, you know, 10 to 12, 13% of the time with very high occurrence and, and readmission rates. Uh, but what's even more troubling is uh, that the, the incidence rates are the impacts on, on patient mortality and morbidity. Um, the presence of a catheter-related bloodstream infection can increase uh, mortality by, uh, by threefold within the first 90 days of having a bloodstream infection, meaning you're three times more likely to die of a, of a CR, uh, if you contract a CRBSI as a, uh, cath- as a hemodialysis patient with a central venous catheter. So this is a critical unmet medical need. Um, we have developed DefendCath and put into clinical trials uh, for, to seek an initial indication for uh, reduction in risk associated with catheter-related bloodstream infections for patients receiving chronic hemodialysis through a CVC. Um, and hopefully, once we, we have approval, we would seek an expanded label from the FDA uh, for other therapeutic uses where patients have high rates of catheter use as well as high risk for infection. I didn't hear you mention one of the reasons why bloodstream infections are so uh, critical to defend against. Aren't antibiotics used when these infections are detected? Sure. Um, I mean, typically, that, that's the way in which uh, catheter-related bloodstream infections or CRBSI are typically uh, addressed today is once they occur, they are treated with antibiotics. Uh, however, as, as you're aware, antibiotic resistance is on the rise. It's a, a you know, very prevalent problem globally, right? Um, and what, you know, what we are seeking to do would be to prevent these bloodstream infections from happening in the first place, um, which would you know, preserve antibiotic use, uh, you know, when needed. We have a great graphic in our, in our corporate presentation that's, that's a Kaplan-Meier curve that shows the survival rate of patients with CRBSIs compared to, uh, to those without a CRBSI. And the curves just diverge so rapidly where at the 90-day time point, you've got three times higher mortality rate with a CRBSI versus without. I mean, it really is a stark visual of of just how deadly these, these bloodstream infections are. Catheter-related bloodstream infections have a, a tremendous negative financial impact on the overall healthcare system. It costs about $2.3 billion a year all in um, uh, across all payers. Um, and this is uh, obviously a cost that could be materially brought down uh, with prevention uh, mechanisms in place. So I guess I, w- I would also add to that, specifically in the inpatient setting of care, the incidence rates for infection, as I mentioned, are you know 10 to 12, 13 percent, but the recurrence rate and reemission rate are what's most problematic. About 60 to 72 percent of the time, you're back in the hospital for recurrence of that same infection within 30 days. Now, this is not just a, a 
detriment to the patient, the patient outcome, but this is also a source of financial loss to the hospital institutions who oftentimes do not get compensated for recurring infections that occur within within that 30 day time point. So this is a this is a you know another source of financial loss uh, for the health system itself. Are these uh, infections due to uh, these catheters a problem across the board or are specific swaths of the population affected more or or less than others? Is it Does it depend on the severity of whatever condition is being treated, things of that nature, the well, uh, proportion? Well, the uh, initial indication, we, it, it, so there are lots of indications where catheters are utilized, but and, and the initial indication where we are uh, focusing is on the hemodialysis community. Mm-hmm. Uh, hemodialysis patients about... 80% of patients will start with a central venous catheter for vascular access, and, and long-term, about 20% of them will remain uh, on a catheter for for years right, at a time while they're waiting organ transplant. And um, this is a patient population that has that already is at risk for, for multiple concomitant conditions and have a very high incidence rate of, of CRVSIs. You know, we also do see uh, quite a bit of health disparity across racial demographics with, mm-hmm. with African American and Hispanic patients disproportionately at risk uh, for CRBSIs compared to white white patients. Once it is FDA approved, I think we are committed to making it available for all patients, right? So we we see that there's a disproportionate impact of bloodstream infections um, on uh, minority demographics, African American patients and Hispanics specifically, which is why. We are focused on partnerships like the one we've announced with Boston Medical, but I, uh, I, I do want to emphasize that we're, we're looking to make the product as broadly available as possible once it gets FDA approval. What about other conditions that a person may be uh, dealing with? The presence of a CRVSI absolutely increases, uh, as I said, it increases concomitant mm-hmm. conditions. So uh, you, you will have a materially higher rate or t- statistically significant higher rate of uh, MI, stroke, uh, endocarditis, and, and a few other uh, very serious conditions. Expound a bit on what makes DefendCath unique. So DefendCath, if approved, uh, will be a first-in-class treatment. Currently, there's there's no FDA, there's no therapeutic drug product that is FDA approved for uh, the prevention of, of bloodstream infections in any uh, therapeutic state, uh, including in the dialysis uh, population. And our, and our product is unique in that it's a combination of heparin and our proprietary new chemical entity, Tyrolidine. Uh, Tyrolidine has some very unique properties. It's, it's not an antibiotic, but it has broad spectrum activity against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, as well as fungus. So it kills a range of pathogens uh, while not building antibiotic resistance because it is not an antibiotic. So um, it's a unique molecule, and, and we are in a, uh, as a unique position to prevent uh or reduce the risk associated with these infections. You recently announced a collaboration with Boston Medical Center. Uh, why is this news significant? And then uh, give us a website where our listeners can learn more about Cormedics. Sure. So uh, we're very happy to announce our partnership with, with, with Boston Medical. We, we see it as a first of its kind uh, partnership and hopefully a, a blueprint for what we can do with other large health systems and institutions. But it really shines a light on the health equity disparity that I mentioned earlier in the call. Um, there's there is a disproportionate impact of CRBSIs on African Americans and Hispanic patients, and we wanted to partner with Boston Medical on uh, isolating uh, baseline data uh, in their health system, showing incidence rate, uh, reinfection rate, readmission rate, and hopefully once we we commercialize or uh, get approval to FENCAP and commercialize the product. Uh, we're in a position to track progress and really see what type of impact we not only have on the Boston uh, medical institution across the board, but on those, those various uh, racial demographic groups. Uh, you can learn more about Cormedics at Cormedics.com. You can learn more about catheter-related bloodstream infections at CRBSIS.com. Joe, I appreciate your time this morning. Hopefully you'll come back and uh, tell us how things are progressing after this uh, approval. That sounds good. Thank you, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Joe Tadis. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.